Hello everybody, my name is Ace Face. I'm in a Thunder Child and I'm going to do some classic Nullsec ratting. So the Thunder Child is, as many of you guys know, the Eden Combat Battleships. It's characterized of being able to use these large Vorton projectors, which are basically these kind of antenna-like structures here you can see. It's a kind of gun hybrid kind of like a, between a missile and a classical turret. And what happens is that if this weapon hits a enemy ship, it'll bounce to a total to like other targets, and it can max damage five at a, at a time. So the thing is, I'm thinking that this actually will be a very good alternative for getting some nice, nice dank ticks in Nullsec ratting, specifically the havens, especially those rock havens. You know those kind of uh, havens where there's like these kind of rock formations. All the NPCs are locked or are kind of into a very small area. So this will make it very easy to fully utilize this Vorton projector. And then it'll hit basically every single target, or it should at least hit every single target. That's what I'm going to try to find out right here. And if we are going to do that, then we basically just take our DPS. So you can see here, 560 DPS. And we, okay, uh, but it's 460 from the turret. And then we multiply that by five, that'll be over 2000. Now we can actually overheat this weapon and then it'll be 550. So that's over 2500 DPS, almost uh, three, th uh, actually more like 2700 or 2600, something like that. So that's a lot of DPS. You know, the classical rattlesnakes go maybe rarely over 1.5k DPS. They do ratting in uh, null sec, but we're going here. If we do, now, this is assuming we do apply all our damage, it'll be like potentially like over 2.6, 2.7k DPS. I'll be crazy right there. You know, if, if it is all applied really well, then we're gonna get some dank dank ticks. Now, the thing is, when I say it applies really well, I said that it's kind of like these Vorton projectors are like a you know hybrid between gun and a missile, so the small stuff will have a harder time hitting it. it. Like the absolute velocity of targets, they actually are like determine how well it applies and also the signature radius, so it doesn't rely on transversal. But at the same time, there's no like missile flight time or anything like that. There's it's still got optimal ranges like turrets you can see here. So we'll just warp to this Apprentice Haven right here. And these Eden Com ships are known to have very good shields. If we go here, I've got this uh, boss active tank. I'm just using one booster right here. Two tech, two multi-spectrums. Very simple fit, four damage modules, but a flux coil to give a bit of extra recharge. Full capacitor rigs. I could perhaps have put some solidifiers instead, but um, I, I found this to be very nice because you can be completely cap stable here. And then this target painter here to aid with application because as I said before, the absolute velocity of a target is what, and also the signature radius determines how much you apply and this target painter will help quite a bit because it's very easy to do it we don't have to get up so close but we are going to still be pretty relatively close right here because the short range the short range ammo is only 40 kilometers long it's not like a cruise missile launcher fit we've got right here so you see here there's a bunch of enemies right here and actually it seems like someone already was running the site before us but we can go anyway so I'm gonna go and just highlight all these guys here and we'll lock them up. And we can actually just keep a bit of a distance because we don't even need to be this close. And then I'm gonna, what I'm actually thinking of doing is shooting the frigates first because I'm pretty sure the frigates are the hardest people to hit. You can see here, I'm got overheated. And the reason I have it overheated is because overheating Edencom weapons is very favorable due to the how they take very little overheating damage. Now I've not even got uh, thermodynamics to level uh, level 5 and uh, you can see here we're hardly taking any heat damage at all so we're able to fully utilize or utilize a lot of that uh, damage overheated damage right here and that's uh, something I really like a lot you know you can get that really nice damage and I've, <laughs> I've got so good shield tank that I've not, I forgot even to activate the shield module so we can just keep these active all the time and we can actually even take the drones as well and have them go crazy uh, something I really like about the Incom ships is that they both do uh, the EM and kinetic damage and the EM do just put this in the group right here the thing is these serpentis guys right here they have uh, bonuses to or they have like the smallest resistance is the kinetic one then uh, you also got the uh, Sancho blood raider guys that have the lowest one, the EM resistance. So we're kind of, it doesn't really matter which enemies you're up against, you'll still kind of be doing it optimally. It's just that um, you're not going to, or you're not going to like have a perfect 
application when it comes to the DPS. Is to, but you don't. The thing I like I like is that I don't have to think about oh I'm going to use this ammo or this ammo. It's just you just use that one ammo, and that's it really. Oh that frigate! There was. A, did you see that? So it seems like what's happened here is that we got one of those spawns where like it's going to like a double spawn. So that's actually a good opportunity to get a nice testing of the dank ticks we can potentially get here. And I can see my drones getting actually pretty pummeled right here by these guys. And now I wonder if my Vorton projectors are actually hitting them because I don't know if yeah I think it maybe it is hitting them I think it does actually maybe hit them because so that could be why they were taking damage right there but um, uh, the, I'll just reserve them just really for the frigates because that's all they are for I'm sorry guys I'm sorry guys I, I'm not a very experienced with these incom ships I would have done this on the real server but the thing is like uh, I don't have the skills the skills are in the process of being trained, takes a long time, all those new support skills needing, really, it just, um, I, I really definitely do plan on getting one of these Thunder Charles because I really like the way it's just, uh, just annihilating these guys right here. You can see here, look, we just, just eliminated half the wave very quickly. Now, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of DPS being done because of how, uh, it seems like it's just bouncing off on these objects here. You can see these objects right here. This is a bit of a problem right here. That they're going on these remote cloaking arrays. It would be nice if it went only on the, you know, the NPCs. So that is a bit of an inefficiency right there. But I think it's still, the, at least the first half of the wave is going fast. Uh, I think another issue is that these guys are not too close to each other. Because they're not close to each other, like this guy is not taking any damage really. It's just these two. So there's like a five kilometer range. So they're not like taking the full DPS from here. That's just a bit unfortunate as well. But I still think that the havens are pretty optimal for this because just how close everyone's together. Like in missions especially, I don't think this is particularly good because in missions, first off, you got things a lot further away than 40 kilometers. Second off is that like in missions, they're often like a bit spread out. They're not in one location. So they're both further away and not so spread out. So I don't, wouldn't say that, or at least I've not never tried this. Maybe it is really good. For, I can definitely imagine some missions where everything is cluttered together, but I don't see this to be extremely good in missions just because of how often NPCs and missions are like spread out and then not fully utilizing the DPS from here. But then again, if you are like hitting three targets, then you're already basically got some really good DPS. Like 1.5k DPS is pretty good DPS. It's not at all something to just, uh, uh, you know, laugh about. It's not, it's uh, definitely pretty impressive right now. So even if you're hitting three targets, you're still doing considerable, amount, considerable amounts of damage. Now I just want to kill this core lord admiral first before we go on to these other guys but in the meantime i could have my hornets actually going for these these uh frigates in the meantime because they're probably not going to get uh, down oh it hit that hornet too <laughs> okay never mind probably when my drones were traveling past this core lord admiral that's when it took damage to just bounce off <laughs> like static electricity almost I wonder what kind of ticks we're going to get. It's going to be interesting. So I used to use a torpedo rattlesnake. That's how I got the best ticks. But it's very dangerous because you're sitting there in the middle of everything. And you, you anyone can just warp in and get you very quickly. The frigate is tackling you. And someone is in the system. You're going to have very little time to react. The thing is though, the, the ticks were just so good because those torpedoes at close range did so... Kill the battleship so quickly. But here, you can be a bit further away. So that's nice. Okay, let's just, just lock these guys up. And we're gonna... These guys are too far away now. Let's shoot these guys. And return the drones. Because the drones are gonna get now annihilated by the Vorton projectors. And we can overheat a little bit to just do a little bit of extra deeps. A little bit of extra deeps right there. <laughs> we can use our uh, target painter to, to go on the frigates and aid them better. You can see that there's like all these... Uh, oh, they're being sensor dampened right now. So we can't shoot anything. A bit unfortunate right there. How far do we have to be? Okay, there we go. Like someone has done the site and they've uh, abandoned it. And it, sometimes it happens when after downtime, then it makes it so that like everything respawns again. So you get like kind of a double spawn here, as you can see. But we've got so good tank that it really doesn't matter. It's just going to be more cannon fodder for our Vorton projectors. That's going to be interesting right there. Oh, uh, this seems actually quite annoying. I, it's not as good as I expected it to be. I've not test, never tested this before, but uh, I don't. This doesn't seem to be as good as I thought because of just how many times we're hitting these like 
remote cloaking array. It's really annoying how we're hitting the a lot of damage is being wasted on these guys. Now I don't know if maybe if I were to you see these remote cloaking arrays? Maybe if I were to like make my way towards this side, then the NPCs would follow me. Because the NPCs are trying to follow me here, and we've got all these remote cloaking arrays here. So this is probably making it so that a lot of the the Vorton projector is being reflected on top of it. But if I was going this way, then maybe it would not uh, be the same issue. I don't see any kind of remote cloaking arrays here. I see this in Pirate Gate. And these asteroids, I don't know if they'll hit these asteroids as well. It's, it's quite a bit confusing what actually the Vorton Projector hits. But uh, it, it seems like it hits uh, a lot of things that at least I'm not particularly interested in uh, hitting. Let's see, now, what have we got here? There's some Core cool Lord Admirals kiting, those kitey scrubs. Like in Nullsec, you've got two kinds of NPCs usually. You've got the kind of brawly types and you've got the snipey types. So in this case, the Core cool Lord Admiral is the... Kiting type, he's going away. You can see here, he's trying to go away, but he gets stuck in this asteroid. This that's actually a good thing about this site is that you get the you get the benefit of it kind of trapping them in here. So even the kiting guys have a bit of a hard time going away. But you can still see that he's kind of cleared uh, this guy, especially. You can see he's just going away, like the little scrub he is. <laughs> so this frigga right here is, as you can see, hardly taking any damage at all, which is really annoying. It can maybe get the frigates go on him and then we'll use the Vorton projector on these Core Lord Admirals and hopefully not too many frigates will take down or not too many of my drones will take damage. It'll be very annoying if I lose more drones but it's kind of what you need here. Okay it doesn't seem like I need any more drones out here. So this is very annoying it seems just like it, I feel like this would be as we saw before like I did the test with the Stormbringer. The Stormbringer in the Abyss and it went pretty well there. Uh, here it's kind of like Everything just is flying all over the place and uh, they're not particularly fast these NPCs so it's hard, like if you want to try to rally them up into one point you can't really get them to move so fast. So you can see here this guy's moved over there, this guy moved over here, we can't just like quickly zap, if like say we put equipped an MWD, we can't just quickly zap here and expect these guys to follow us, it'll take a long time. So this is a bit annoying as well right here. It's not like in the abyss where there's a bunch of like I don't know Efialtis guys that are going 1.2k a second. We can just uh, lure all those sleeper cruisers, you know, those, they're called Efialtis. If uh, We can't just like lure them very easily because they go very fast. So we, if they were at a point which was very far away from another group of NPCs, we could very easily like lure them to, you know, bring them into the other group so that we are applying full damage. It doesn't seem like we're doing a whole lot of damage here. You see that only one target, this is actually really bad. Really bad actually. So this actually seems to be a bit of an issue with the Thunder Trial Ratting. And so uh, there are possible or improvements, as I said before. I could have gone here on the other side and I could have, uh, you know, lured them away from all these like random uh, cloaking device things here. But uh, even then, it seems like the kitey kind of guys, they are able to get away quite quickly. And uh, that's a bit of a problem. Now, what I could have done maybe was to focus on one type of NPC at the same time. So maybe I could have focused on the Grand Admirals first. I feel like uh, you have to get used to this and to, or get into the rhythm of doing this because, as I said before, this is the first time you're doing this. So I'm obviously not going to be a super pro at this, but uh, it seems like you really definitely have to like prioritize targets if you want to get this to be done efficiently. Otherwise, you can see that like a lot of these times I'm shooting with the Vorton projector, it's not fully applying to all of them. Like, what is this, like two people we're shooting? It's, uh, it's really not good. And then you look at the DPS. What is this? 400 DPS. Okay, we can overheat obviously a little bit. 500 DPS. That's what we're talking here. We're talking like low skill Vexor Navy issue or cruiser skill levels. Not even a battleship, let alone a 2.6k DPS monster, you know. It's... Uh, I'm a bit disappointed, but at the same time, I feel like perhaps improvements to my piloting could improve the outcome as well. We'll make our way towards this Grand Admiral over here. We can actually, in fact, even switch over to Strike Snipe because that has a bit of a better range if we really want to get that guy. Let's wreck this guy here. Or we could just forget about him, to be honest, since we've got the double spawn, we can just focus on the new NPCs that spawn here. Unless this guy is like a trigger. But then we're probably going to be triggering another another spawn. So we just focus on that spawn. Mm -hmm. You can see here just all the DPS just getting wasted on these cloaking devices here it should be pretty good to shoot these guys here you see that cruiser went down right there but uh, all these kind of th 
these structures over here. It's a bit annoying. We've got this random cruiser over here. I don't know what he's doing. He seems to be orbiting at this range. So it's a bit of an issue when things don't get killed straight away. Then uh, stuff is going to get uh, cleared or get a uh, further distance. Let's see if the next wave goes a bit better. We can try going, being or prioritizing our targets a bit better last time. Because another issue I did, I could think of IDing right now is that I went for the frigates first. Frigates obviously take a long time to get killed. But uh, I could, should have maybe gone for the battleships first and then kill the battleships very quickly. Maybe have my drones go for the frigates. That would have probably been better, I can imagine. Let's see here. Overheat this a bit. And this Grand Admiral is kiting us like a scrub. He's already he's he's fast enough, so we're not going to catch up with him. It's a bit unfortunate, but we'll still go here because this is going to take us a bit further away from those, you know, those cloaking arrays. I would prefer those things not to interfere. I don't even know. Maybe the Wotan Projector does have a prioritizing system where it goes for ships first, and if there's no sh ship, then it goes for like one of these structures here. Perhaps. I'm not 100% sure. If you guys do know, let me know in the comments below. But uh, I, uh, it's uh, it seems a bit complicated. It's not so simple as I thought. I thought, you know, what, what my expectations from this were that I just jump in there, shoot the Voton projectors, all these rats are going to die really quickly. But it doesn't seem like that. It gets a bit complicated when you factor in the movement here. It's like I was thinking like, ooh, yeah, it's 2.6k DPS. Wow, wow. Uh, we are hardly ever hitting more than two targets right now. Especially now towards the end of the wave where all of them have moved a lot. We can actually just shoot our drone, put our drones on this cruiser right here. Just to get a bit of an extra DPS. That must have been uh, it's a bit annoying. Oh, never mind, we can't shoot our drones now because of, because of this stupid, uh, you know. The drones are just going to get annihilated by my, my uh, Voton projector. It would really be really good if there was a way to make it so that it could not shoot your drones. Shoot friendly drones, but I guess that's a... The downsides to having a weapon that could potentially do 2.6k DPS, I guess. <laughs> you have to think about that as well. Using the target painter to get a bit of a better application. I have realized though that the Vorton projectors tend to have a bit of a better application compared to their like standard weapon counterparts like a cruise missile launcher. Like if we, the large Vorton projector is a large weapon, so for battleships. So if you compare this to maybe like a cruise missile launcher or especially a torpedo launcher, I find that the Vorton projector has a very a lot easier time applying. Same way with like the Stormbringer. Remember when I was doing the Stormbringer in the Abyss? I didn't use a single application module and I was applying so good. So damn good. Okay, so now we've got a bunch of sips here. So this is a very good opportunity to just try out to get these guys killed here. Okay, and actually, you know what? Actually, no, never mind. Recall these guys. Overheat. Grand Admirals. Grand Admirals all the way. Let's see how fast we can kill these guys. <laughs> so a lot of these, still we're hitting the remote cloaking arrays, but now they're a lot closer to each other, so it should be a bit easier to get all the damage applied. You see that? Quite a few targets were hit right there. We'll just go for the battleships, I think. That's a good thing. Because the battle cruisers are a bit faster, it'll be easier to manage them if they get too far away. Also, they die pretty quickly anyway, so I usually don't have to think about them. Not only taking a bit of damage though, not so much. You see, this guy has in half armor. These guys should hopefully be somewhat close there, but they've not even taken any armor. Okay, this guy's taking armor damage. This guy as well. Hmm. Yeah, this is not as good as I had hoped. I hoped it would have been better, but it doesn't seem to be that particularly great. No! I was really like hoping of just taking Thunder Child to Nullsec. Just annihilate Sancha Scrubs because I, I live in Sancha, Sancha Nullsec. Uh, but it doesn't, uh, doesn't, I don't think it will be happening particularly soon though. <laughs> or, may, or maybe if I find some way to pilot this very well. Okay, wreck these guys. We tank really well though, we're just chilling here, don't have to worry about anything. I've just got multi spectrums on, I could have even optimized the tank even more to put like a kinetic hardener so that specifically the kinetic damage is improved because these guys do it. Actually, thermal would be better. The, the Serpentis, you're supposed to. Uh, tank for uh, kinetic, but um, no, you're supposed to apply kinetic, but you tank for thermal. This is a bit of the other way around. I got confused right there. Okay. Kill this guy. Not this Grand Admiral. That's the guy who's kiting away. This little scrubby one. So, I mean, that's 17 mil tick right there. Not at all impressive. <laughs> Not at all impressive right there. 
I can potentially get a lot better, like, you know, kiting uh, or not uh, piloting uh, maneuvers from me. But it seems to be uh, not as straightforward as I thought. It seems to really be a case of like prioritizing targets and uh, keeping or making sure that NPCs don't get too far away from the group. So I think that's pretty interesting because, you I mean, obviously I, I, I think it's good that uh, some activities in the online are not, you know, completely brain dead, especially ranting is often known to be like a pretty brain dead activity where you don't have to think at all about. So if you want to rat in Eden Comships, you're going to have to think about these things. You're going to have to think about how far these guys roam away, how fast they are and how much you're applying and also have to worry about your drones as well. <laughs> The Storm Ringer, on the other hand, seems to be really good for the Abyss, but for this guy, Thunder Child doing ratting, uh, not, not, not my favorite, not my favorite right there. But if you guys can think of any like potential improvements, so what I was thinking here is, first of all, I would have uh, warped, or I'd have gone here, maybe you could have used an MWD and get, or MJD and get like further away from here, all these uh, cloaking arrays here. Second of all, I could also like have, in the earlier spawns, I could have prioritized you know the grand admiral so in this case we've got like a grand admiral just kiting away like a little scrub here this guy i can't really get to him unless i switch over to the long range ammo um, hmm. uh, apart from that what do you guys think i could have done to improve this uh, i feel like this is a bit of a tricky one here because it's just it's hard when all these guys split off then you've essentially just you're dividing your dps by five or four like you've really it's, it takes a big toll you know i was thinking like, oh 2.6 kd we just multiply by five but you know if it's not hitting just straight off remove that from your dps that's just free dps that is uh removed from your, your application right there that's a bit sad right there but you know this is a good, good actually a good example of one of those kind of uh, like theory things that in practice maybe uh, isn't as good as or as expected like uh, I, I noticed a lot of things in like games in general, like especially like strategy games. Like you think of like a plan to do something. It sounds really good on paper, but then when you actually do it, all the small variables that you can't really take into consideration, they actually do play a quite a big role. And I feel like this is one of those cases right here. Like you can plan this like really awesome fit, like they can all do this, do this, but you didn't like for example, especially this applies a lot to the abyss as well. But there are some ground rules I think for the abyss that count, but. Uh, when it, like there are certain things that are like oh you, you didn't think of like maybe putting that having that application for that particular wave you know there's all these like small like variables when it comes to like actually doing something and then just theorizing it in your head and I feel like this is something here where in theory it sounds really good 2.6k DPS but in practice it's not all really particularly being applied right here also perhaps a different anomaly could be good uh, to counteract these cloaking devices right here I know I think the Forsaken Hubs, it's uh, it has a lot of battleships as well because you want to go for the battleship uh, heavy uh, anomalies to get the most ticks. The Forsaken Hub is also pretty heavy in the battleships and I don't think there's a lot of like these extra like structures like these cloaking devices and all these kind of stuff around there so I think maybe that could also be a potential right there. But all in all, uh, I'm not particularly uh, impressed with the Thunder Child. I thought it would be really good. But in actuality, it didn't seem to be that good. And I can definitely see that an improvement to my piloting and target prioritization could have helped a lot right here. You guys let me know in the description what you think I could have uh, done better. And if you want me to try this again, or I should try improving. Hope you guys enjoyed this video right here. Uh, this is maybe so that it gives you a little bit of thoughts before you maybe decide to pull the trigger on the Thunder Child. Uh, if you enjoyed this video right here, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.